Jets. We're all set. We're good. Right now. There he yeah. is. There's right Jim. now. And he's got his uh, Carolina Hurricanes yeah. uh, sweater on or sweatshirt on. Uh, Chip Patterson, Cover 3 podcast moderator. All right, we're going to prove to people that college football still matters here. We're going to talk. I got a couple of college football items, and then we'll uh, we'll slip into hoops. Maybe you can diagnose what's wrong with NC State or the entire league in general. Um, what do you mean with North Carolina? NC State. No, no, I'm sorry. Yes, I apologize. Yeah. No, no shame in losing at JPJ when uh, when Virginia is trying to you know get the screws tight. That was a <sighs> you know, disappointing defeat, sure, but nothing like what we right. saw uh, from the Tar Heels. Yes, no, and State made it uh, made you think, huh? They might come back here uh, in the second half. All right, so let's deal with a couple things first. Uh, Pac-12 thinking about adding SMU and San Diego State, and then take their conference to the market to get a TV deal. SMU brings you into the state of Texas. San Diego uh, San Diego State keeps you in Southern California. They still don't have Southern Cal and UCLA. I mean, I realize it's the only thing in the West Coast, but how powerful is that? It is only a survival move, and right. it is an inventory move because um, I'm – I, 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 I did not take a single math class in college, Adam. I didn't. <laughs> not one? Not one. My my AP shout out to Broughton High School, my AP stat grade on the AP exam checked me out of all the math I needed to uh to finish my communications degree. Very so nice. I could be wrong. But when you have 10 teams in a conference, as the Pac 12 will have after USC and UCLA leave, you have less conference games than when you have 12 teams. Math. <laughs> so when the Pac-12 is going to try to split up, because here's our own Dennis Dodd, big game Dennis Dodd on CBSSports.com reported that the belief right now is that it will be ESPN and a streaming service. Okay. So you're already trying to divvy up a certain amount of conference games. Inventory is the word that the TV nerds use to be able to describe this. And that's why I say it's a matter of survival because the Pac-12 – just needs more inventory. They need more right. things to sell. And so adding two more teams on a very basic level that allows them to do that. You mentioned the Texas market somewhere where the Pac-12 is not, uh, the Southern California market somewhere where the Pac-12 is losing to the Big Ten. But I also think that if you want to talk about the product itself, you are getting healthy programs. Sure. You are getting competitive programs, ones that have been in recent history uh, getting investment from uh, from their local universities. And at San Diego State, there's just so much pride in the San Diego State football that if I was George Klyovkov, the commissioner, and I was looking at all the pieces that are left on the table, knowing that I had to pick two, <laughs> these are sensible selections uh, for me to say. But does it make the Pac-12 anywhere close to where they were with USC and UCLA? Absolutely not. Does it make it a stronger conference? No. But I think that to, in order to survive, in order to uh, you know, give themselves the opportunity to keep that conference together, they just need to be able to beef back up so they can sell more games and make more money between ESPN and a streaming partner. feels to me like they're delaying the inevitable. Um, streaming partner, like they might be better off just going entirely to a streaming partner and doing a revenue share. Uh, the the one thing that I think the Pac-12 does have an advantage over is that at least west of the Mississippi, the time zone difference is not egregious, and it there there are still a lot of people who live out there who are Pac-12 fans uh, or Pac-10 fans. Uh, Twelve, I guess it's going to be twelve again. So leaving Fox though, correct? No, just completely ditching their deal with Fox and going to ESPN and a streaming service, correct? That's the, the belief right now. None of that is uh, official, but the belief within the industry, according to Dennis Dodd, is that it will be ESPN and a streaming partner. And make no doubt, ESPN wants to be in this because ESPN wants to have live football to show at 10.30 sure. p.m. Eastern time. I mean, the, the reason why this isn't all a streaming service play is because ESPN has a lot of motivation. They got, a, right. between all of the family of networks, there are a lot of places for ESPN to be able to put games that are going to be kicking off at 7.30 p.m. local time on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And so those are going to be the spots uh, where where ESPN is still going to want to part. And that's that's one of the Pac-12's best selling points right now is to try yeah. to stick with ESPN. Now, in the ESPN-Fox war, which continues as 
Texas and Oklahoma is being stuck uh, in the Big 12 for an extra season. Yeah, I want to talk about that. That's that's where it becomes interesting on the Big 12 side of this because I posted Tom Fernelli on the Cover 3 podcast today. All right, does this mean it's done? Does this mean that all of our talk about the Pac-12 trying to take some Big 12 teams or the Big 12 trying to take some Pac-12 teams, you know, for a little while there, they were standing at odds, these two new commissioners, each sort of threatening the other in a cold war of conference realignment. <laughs> and I said, okay, so now Pac-12 gets its Texas. It doesn't get the Texas that it wants, but it gets into Texas. Uh, you're able to get the Southern California. Hopefully you sign this new deal. It keeps the league together. And Tom pushed back. He was like, look, I mean, the Arizonas, Colorado, and Utah, that is the attractive move for the Big 12. And the Big 12 right. is a stronger conference than the Pac-12 uh, after the recent round of realignment. If, if what the Big 12 is saying is like, yes, we lost Texas and Oklahoma, but we went and got BYU, we went and got Cincinnati, we went and got UCF, we got into Florida, and we were able to strengthen our hold in Texas by getting Houston. Right. That conference, even after losing Texas and Oklahoma, is stronger than the Pac-12 will be after losing USC and UCLA, uh, even if it is able to replace them with San Diego State and SMU. So I I thought that this, this means that we're done for a little bit. I think Tom brought up a great point that the Arizonas, Colorado, and Utah, that is the package that is very attractive to the Big 12. Yes. I heard you say earlier delaying the inevitable it might be delaying the inevitable that's the way i look at it I'm, I'm not i'm not sure the big 12 isn't also delaying the inevitable uh but i don't think both of those leagues will survive as power leagues uh, i know the big 12 right now is playing great basketball i'm not even uh not even arguing uh that the arizona schools to me are outliers arizona university of arizona football has never been all that good i've always thought arizona state could be. I think all the bones are there for a, a program that could be good. And then you have Oregon and Washington in the uh, Pacific Northwest that, I mean, the rumors had the Big Ten going after them, but I don't know that that's, uh, that's going to happen. We've kind of joked that the ACC should just have an ACC West and it'd be the Pac-12, but I just don't know if there's enough out there to make the numbers work for the Atlantic Coast Conference. Yeah, I don't see... I. College football playoff expansion ultimately was the thing that kept us from racing ahead to Pac-12 dissolves, Big 12 dissolves, ACC's right. apart, and we're into this two-conference mega world. And that is the way the conversation was going. Yeah, I don't think so. In July and early August, you know. And yeah, because everybody like, was mad. Everybody was mad about uh, all the uh, all the p people were mad that Southern California was somehow going to be in the Big Ten. So we were all mad. Oh, these two teams, these two leagues are going to just swallow everybody up. It's going to be, you know, forty or fifty teams from two different leagues, and that was going to be it. And I just thought we were all mad. But everybody it, needs I, I, each other to to a certain extent. The college football playoff expansion, which is driven, you know, like by the college football's power brokers, of which Greg Sankey appears to be a part. Greg Sankey. <laughs> Not appears, who is a part. He's one of the strongest, <laughs> most powerful people in college athletics. But Greg Sankey has said multiple times in multiple places that he thinks his vision for the sport, which is an important vision since he's at the steering wheel, is that there's maximum involvement. That yeah. is not consolidation. Like his right. vision for the sport is to be able to have a Pac 12, a league that's going to be able pr to produce a champion to go and play in the college football playoff for the Big 12, for the ACC, for for this not to be ultra consolidated into two mega conferences, an AFC and an NFC, kind of like we had spelled out in the doomsday scenarios back in the summertime. And so as we continue to look at the 12-team model that we're going to have for at least two years and even the potential expansion to 16, I think... I just think that that product is better served by having multiple conferences. I ag agreed, but he doesn't control the Pac-12 or the Big 12. And it's hard to look at the Pac-12 and take it seriously as a football product. And I realize I say that as an ACC fan. I, I realize that I mean Oregon and Washington like you've you can I'm very not, quickly start to fill out your your roster at the top and be like all right so who's who's getting it done at the high level because they're because Pac 12's got some uh even after losing USC and UCLA Pac 12 still got some very very healthy strong well-funded serious football programs big state universities 
Yep. The, that big state universities matters. That's what they have over the SEC, which is, or, or rather the ACC, which is half small private institutions. Uh, all right, Chip Patterson here. Let's uh, let's get to the be- the Big Twelve part of this because uh, Texas and Oklahoma are going to have to wait an extra year before they leave. And meanwhile, BYU, Cincinnati, Central Florida, Houston, all showing up. Wait a second, that league looks bloated. We went from ten teams to like what, one hundred and ten. What's going on there? <laughs> All right, so the uh, the team show up from the American Athletic Conference. We always knew that there was going to be uh, a one year of awkwardness as Texas and Oklahoma have to run through the gambit, but it's actually it's more than likely going to be two. They've been trying to negotiate a way to join the SEC in 2024. That's very important to the SEC because that is when – the college football playoff, the new model debuts. Uh, but most importantly, that's when the SEC and its new contract, which is all ESPN, is going to debut. They would like to roll out their all ESPN uh, new 3.30 is no longer on CBS. Right. 3.30 is on ABC. and I they'd told like you, to you guys won anyway. They, they would like to have Texas and Oklahoma uh, in that group. But Fox, which is in the Big 12, I was like, nope, when we cut our check to the Big 12 in this new media rights deal, we were doing it because we want to have Texas and Oklahoma all the way through the end. We want to get every <laughs> two more little years. penny. And so, yeah, two more years, two years of awkwardness, of games between Texas and Oklahoma and the newbies, uh, BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF. Right. Here's my my spin on this, and uh, – I. I imagine that there's a decent amount of Longhorn and Sooner fans here, but I know you're excited about you know joining the Southeastern Conference, but it's better to stay. It is better oh, of course for Texas is. and Oklahoma to stay with these newer coaching staffs and continue to build up because one thing that I'm seeing and hearing from the recruiting trail is that they're able to win recruiting battles by selling the SEC and they don't even have to start playing the SEC yet. Right. This is the best time for Texas and Oklahoma because you are building for the future without actually having to play an SEC schedule. And so the SEC really wants Texas and Oklahoma in now. If I'm Brent Venables, I stay till the very, very end because I would like to continue to stack these top 10 classes, but then take those classes to go play the, against a Big 12 schedule. And guess what? You've got a better chance at getting into the, the college playoff. football playoff from the Big 12. I it's said a, this. I said this when the decision was announced two summers ago that Texas and Oklahoma, this is a great idea until you start playing in that league because what you have been uh, allowed to do, and frankly, only Oklahoma took advantage of it. Texas did not. The, the, the ultimate wake up call for, for Texas Longhorn football is going to be seven and five. The ultimate wake-up call, which is, I guess, basically where they've been anyway. Uh, I know. I was going to say the Charlie Strong, Tom <laughs> Herman, late Mac Brown era. Like, unfortunately, uh, Steve Sarkeesian went five and seven. Yeah, in maybe year it's going to be worse. Maybe they're going to be like three and five in league play year in and year out. Oklahoma, it's it's going to be a total different, totally different animal. Uh, but at least for a couple of years, maybe. Well, maybe probably just one. They'll just trade games. The Fox will they'll, they'll trade games and, and do something like that. Isn't ESPN uh, and uh, the Big Ten? They've tried, tra- they've tried to make an offer. Oh yeah, the ESPN, the Penn State Purdue game, for example, Ooh. this year was a a flip for uh, for something else. But an offer has been declined. Like oh, the talk wasn't that for Bucket Aikman? It yeah. was to get Bucket Aikman. We trade you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give right. you a Penn State Purdue game. You give us Bucket Aikman. So well, right a, now, and a right third now, round pick. Basically saying like, no, run. We're running the price up. <laughs> they are they are making it not like it does not fit on the trade chart. The trade machine is saying the trade is unsuccessful, and Fox is saying like, nope, we want to run the price up right now. Uh, we're we're going to make ESPN really really want it. And again, if I'm Texas and Oklahoma. I kind of think you're in the best position possible to wait out the contract. It'll be awkward to play the 2023 and 2024 season in this bloated Big 12 conference, but you've got a better chance at making the college football playoff, and you've got a better chance at stacking more wins. And for those coaches who were both hired in the last three years, you want to build up as much success as possible before that wake-up call is that is SEC Saturday. So the Big 12, which will at, at some point have 12 teams again, has been playing with 10. But next year, and maybe for two years, we'll have 14. 
Uh, we can't. You, you need a scorecard for all of this. All right, Chip Patterson, tell me why North Carolina is not in danger of being a number one seed in the NIT. North Carolina is in danger of being a number one seed in the NIT. Um, North Carolina gets comes out with a you know big pep talk about you know we need to you know get our enthusiasm back we need to get our energy back we need to get back to our identity and what we do well and to which i ask what do you do well because i have seen north carolina for stretches of basketball this season do things well but there is not one core identity of this team there are times where everything should run through armando Baycott. there are times where everything should run through rj davis you know there are times where you've got a group that has sneakily been pretty good on the defensive side more so than they are on offense and then you just live with the highs and lows of caleb love i mean it is all over the place it is a jackson pollock of x's and o's like it is nothing that you can wrap your arms around. If you take the very, very best cut-ups from an entire season of play, then yes, you've got a team that not only is going to be in the NCAA tournament, but has a chance to go on a deep run just like they did a year ago. But the the lack of consistency and the way that that identity is shape-shifted throughout the year, that's what's going to make it really tough here for the final stretch is that they've got to find something they do, they need to commit to it, and, and that needs to be the path to success in my opinion. I'm not sure they have a deep run. In them, I'm 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 more skeptical of that than I am. Um, I mean, I think they can get in, and I think that unless they lose basically all of their, maybe not all, but most of their quad one and quad two opportunities, and they have a bunch of them, especially a few at home, uh, unless they go like one and four against that group, I think they'll they'll find a way to get in. But I just don't think they're that good. Um, I, I think, you know, it's weird. They'll go as far as Caleb Love takes him. Right. That That's I mean, it. He, they'll go. If as, he blacks out, then, I mean, he blacked out against UCLA. Right. right? Yeah. I mean, it's, he did. There's, there is an elite, there is an elite eight potential when everything clicks into pieces. When you take all of the best of North Carolina and you put it together, mm -hmm. but you've just haven't had that for most of the season. They, what they need is a, a guy on the team who looks like the Philadelphia Flyers mascot. They need gritty. I'm sorry. Brady, Brady Manick, we're, we're, the further we get away from Brady Manick, the more we realize how important he was to the entire equation. Uh, but, yeah, last, last night was disappointing. See what they, uh, what they do coming up this weekend. Their next two games are home against Clemson, home against Miami. I don't want to say that they have to win those two games, but... I think they got to win those two games, both of them. But to reach back, oh, I know we're into ex extra time. All right, but to reach back <laughs> to the beginning of the season, this team was competitive against Iowa State and Alabama, and those are two teams that we talk about as being elite eight, final four kind of teams. Right. They don't win any of them though. They have, the, their best win is NC State. Right. But I wasn't arguing the resume. Right. I'm talking about competitive. Like, what does the ceiling look like from a competitive standpoint? They they stood on the court with teams that we believe are among the best in the country. Oh yeah. And they were not obviously outclassed. I think so like, no, I think North Carolina possible. right as they are currently const uh, construed can get into the NCAA tournament as a ten, as a 10 seed and give a 7 seed a run for their money and uh, and then go home. Right now as they are as they are currently playing. They have that in them, but I don't see them making plays to beat them. Um, their defense disappeared against Wake Forest yesterday. It yeah, was just, was it, it looked super disappointing. I thought I watched the Duke game again. Mm. Duke, Duke against Miami on Monday was defense optional. And last night was defense optional. They got all their grind out over the weekend. They got no grind left. <laughs> Duke and North Carolina played a rock fight. They and did. then all of a sudden they're like, I we've we've got no grind left. We yeah. got no grit left. All of our rocks. <laughs> they are left in Durham and we don't have anything left. I'll talk Hope to these <laughs> 30 footers go down. Chip Patterson at chip underscore Patterson. Uh I appreciate your time, man. I'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Y'all be well. Chip Patterson.